was waiting for me. Yes. I was sitting <laughs> and waiting for everyone else. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, wonderful. I'm so glad that everyone is excited to be here so that you all responded correctly by saying good morning. So thank you. My name is Jackie Taylor Holston, and I am one of the co-developers with Peter Holston and the Holston Companies and many, many partners that you'll see here today. So I wanted to welcome everyone to the new Lawson House. And in case you're wondering, <laughs> so in case you're wondering why I said new when you're like, oh, geez, this is a historic building. It's really old. And what do you mean new? For those of you who had the opportunity to be here before the rehab, you know that this is new. It's something new. It's something wonderful. It is something that we hope all of us will partake in in terms of bringing programs back and making everyone feel helpful and in terms of how to reach all of the families that want to have their loved ones here with us. There are many people that you don't know in terms of who they are, their faces you may see on the streets, but you need to know that every one of us has a story to tell, and we will be sharing with you a story today with one of them. And what Lawson was, it was the, um, the Lawson YMCA before we took it over, and it was 583 sleeping rooms. What you're going to see today is that it's now 406 efficiency apartments. That means everyone has a bathroom, everyone has a kitchen, and they can actually have company in the rooms as opposed to just coming to have some place to sleep. So we couldn't get to where we are today without the many partnerships, without the many people that we see in this room and everyone saying, why isn't she introducing everyone? What about the important people? You need to look in this room and see that everyone in here is important. Everyone in here is important. Everyone plays a role. Everyone has a, a responsibility to make sure that this building and the people that will be living here succeed. So. Again, look at the people around you. Realize that many of them helped with the finances. Many of them helped with the social services. Many of them helped with the moving in and the moving out of all the people. Many of them are with the management. Many of them are city. Many of them are finance. Many of them are agencies. Many of them are utilities. All of those things, all of those partners needed to come together to make this work. And that means everything from city to state to federal. And you're like, wow, all those people? Yes, because we're important. We're important, the people who live here are important, and you will hear that from all of our partners today that will introduce themselves and their programs to you, and hopefully you will stay engaged. So again, um, thank you for coming. I would like to introduce our next speaker, which is um, Tracy Scott, and Tracy Scott is with the Chicago Housing Authority, and she will come up and she will welcome you as well. Tracy. Thank you, Jackie. I, I'm Tracy Scott, and I'm the Chief Executive Officer of the Chicago Housing Authority, and I am so thrilled and excited to be here today to celebrate the grand opening of Lawson House, a project that's been long in the coming but long needed. Congratulations, first of all, to Peter and Jackie Taylor Holston um, for your uh, your resilience and determination to make this project come through, and the entire Lawson House redevelopment team on this great achievement. I also want to acknowledge uh, Mayor Johnson. Uh, thank you for your presence here. And our partners at the Chicago Department of Housing, Ida and HUD, uh, we do have here in the audience our regional administrator, uh, Diane Shelley. And I'd also like to acknowledge our CHA commissioners who are here with us today, Commissioner Washington, Commissioner Parker, Commissioner Harris and I think Commissioner Gutierrez are here, and the staff who have stuck by uh, Jackie and Peter as they've gone through this. And, and I don't always uh, say their names, but I want to say them out loud. So Carrie Steinbuck, Anna Garcia, Myra Ortiz, Cheryl Burns, and we also have here in the audience our Chief of Development, uh, Ann McKenzie. So more than 90 years ago, this, this building opened as a YMCA in 1931. And as Jackie said, this is the rebirth. What was once the largest SRO building in the city is now home to more than 400 affordable, accessible, and high quality studio apartments for people who are at risk of homelessness. That's 400 affordable apartments in the heart of Chicago's Gold Coast. So 
CHA will provide 130 project-based vouchers for this building, guaranteeing $72 million in rental assistance over the next 30 years. 30 of these vouchers will be offered to veterans exclusively as part of a partnership with the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs and HUD. And all residents who live here will have access to supportive services to help them gain stability and be shown the dignity that they deserve. This is just one way that CHA is committed to the vital citywide mission of ending homelessness. And as I've said before, the Gold Coast isn't just for those with gold. <laughs> Lawson House is another example of CHA's vision of a thriving city where every neighborhood has quality, affordable housing and everyone feels welcome. Our work is urgent and intentional. More than 1,100 apartments and housing developments around the city are currently under construction, and these include developments on the north side, on the south side, on the west side. And much like we did here with Lawson House, our long-term PBV assistance makes possible supportive housing for people who are at risk of homelessness. You can see this work in action at construction sites, uh, including Foglia Residence at the Chicago Lighthouse, Sarah's of Lakeside, and Inglewood Family Homes. In Chicago and around the nation, we know that when we combine housing with services, like here at Lawson House, people can achieve stability and lead successful, thriving lives. So I'll say it again. The Gold Coast is not just for those with gold. <laughs> so on behalf of the CHA Board of Commissioners and the entire staff of CHA, thank you. Congratulations again, Jackie and uh, Peter. And we look forward to even more progress. So now it's my pleasure to introduce my friend and partner, in crime sometimes, uh, Kristen Faust of the Illinois Housing Development Authority. <laughs> Thank you, Tracy. And good morning, Chicago. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. On behalf of the Illinois Housing Development Authority Board and the IDA staff, I'd like to thank Holston, uh, Development Corporation and Holston Human Capital, Mayor Brandon Johnson and the City of Chicago, and everyone who has been working for more than a decade to make today possible. I'd also like to recognize the Ida Board, and especially our Chairman, King Harris, who is with us today, for their continued support and guidance of Ida's work, but also for their approval of the tax credits that generated $25 million of equity to put into this project and approval of the first and third mortgages. The Lawson House has been an important affordable housing resource in the city's near north neighborhood for nearly a century. Over the years, it's been part of a safety net for newcomers to the city, for somebody experiencing a vulnerable moment in their life where they needed additional support, and also for people just of modest means who need a decent, stable, safe place to live near community services, near healthcare, near green space, near the lake. So uh, this building has been so, so important, and it's why we're so proud to be part of its transformation here today into, as you heard, a modern rental development that will help our most housing vulnerable neighbors live with stability, independence, and dignity. Over the past four years, with the support of the, of the Pritzker, Governor Pritzker's administration, Ida has helped fund an, uh, the f over 15,000 units of affordable housing, including over 2,200 units of uh, supportive housing, like what you heard Tracy describe, housing designed for people struggling with homelessness. But let me say this. While we have some of the resources to create more of this affordable housing, our resources alone are not enough. We cannot do this without our partners. This renovation is a huge public-private partnership that people have been working together on for years to make sure that Lawson House remains a platform for residents' health, stability, and personal growth and permanent affordability. We're so grateful for all of this. 
but I'd be remiss. And I do want to just take a moment, this is probably the most important part of my comments, to say none of this would have happened without what I consider to be civic treasures, amazing resources to the state of Illinois. That's Peter and Jackie Holston. <laughs> Their tenacity, their grit, their vision. Do you realize that Holston companies alone are responsible for thousands of units of affordable housing across this great city and state? It's amazing. It's an amazing legacy, and we're so proud to be part of it. So once again, I'd like to thank the incredible partners and leaders who have championed affordable housing. So proud to be here today with, with Mayor Johnson and his his great new housing commissioner, Lisette Castaneda, um, and all of the partners here who make today possible. Uh, I'm proud to hand the podium over to another important partner, J.P. Morgan Chase, and I'd like to introduce you to Mark McCann, the managing director of J.P. Morgan Chase. There you are, Mark. <laughs> Thank you, Kristen. Kristen and I go back a long, long way, so we'll... Uh not go into that too much. Uh, congratulations, Peter and Jackie. As Kristen said, what you have done for this city is remarkable, and I'm so proud to have known you guys for so long. Uh, we are so excited to be here today. J.P. Morgan Chase provided an $85 million construction loan facility and $82 million and more of historic and low-income housing tax credit equity to this fabulous building. I'd like to thank, in part, my teammate and long-term friend, uh, Jack Bernard, who led up the construction lending team for Chase's Community Development Bank. I'd like to also acknowledge my boss, a great friend, Bill Pelletier, who runs all of J.P. Morgan Chase's Affordable Housing Equity Group, as well as my colleague, Emily Garrett, who led a fabulous team in managing our investment in this transaction. We would not be here today without our partners in Walker Dunlop, who do such a tremendous job marrying fabulous deals, fabulous developers, with whatever capital we are able to bring to bear. On top of this, uh, fi the financial partners, we want to congratulate all the development team, the architects, the lawyers, the, uh, the contractors that have done such amazing work on this uh, transaction. And as others acknowledged, congratulations to Ms. Faust and Mayor Johnson. Without the public sector commitment, this would not have been possible. And so we commend you and agree that this sort of public-private partnership is a model to serve problems big and small, local and national. We look, look forward to continuing to invest with Holston Development and across the whole city of Chicago as J.P. Morgan Chase seeks to help finance affordable housing and build community. But primarily, primarily, I'm here today to welcome the residents to your new home. It is you, not the bankers, not the lawyers, not anyone else, who will bring this amazing building to life. May its beautiful renovation inspire you as long as you live here. Congratulations to everyone, most particularly the future residents. Uh, I'd now like to introduce uh, the City of Chicago's new Commissioner of Housing, Lizette Castaneda. Thank you so much for that introduction. It is an honor to be here today to celebrate this ribbon cutting ceremony of Lawson House. It is a grand occasion to be here with other city officials, the Holston team, CHA and Ida. I am so proud to stand before you as the Commissioner of Housing, representing this organization that is committed to ensuring equitable access and safe, affordable housing for all Chicagoans. Today marks a significant milestone in our ongoing effort to preserve and enhance our city's vital single room occupancy housing stock. Lawson House, with its preserved 400 plus studio apartments, symbolizes the endeavors of the city and local officials and community members to enhance the affordability of our city. In a time when housing affordability is a pressing issue nationwide, our commitment to preserving SROs is unwavering. So we applaud our partners in ensuring that Lawson House stays affordable at 30 and 50% of the area median income. 
The rehabilitation of Lawson House is a prime example of our dedication to maintaining the fabric of our neighborhoods. With upgraded building mechanics, air conditioning for all units, and revitalized shared public spaces, including the community room, fitness area, and laundry room, we are not just renovating a structure. We are making these spaces that the residents can be comfortable and excited to call home. Because the preservation of SROs is paramount, the Department of Housing allocated two and a half million dollars to Lawson House, made up of just over five million dollars in nine percent low-income housing tax credits and seventeen and a half million dollars in home funds. Please join me in acknowledging the hard work of DOH staff that made this transaction possible. DOH Deputy Commissioner Tamara Collins, Assistant Commissioner Esther Sorrell, Financial Planning Analyst Dina Wayne, and Project Coordinator Ryan Bilateri. The Department of Housing's main priority and mission has long been to safeguard the city's affordable housing stock, and this also means helping folks move from homelessness and housing instability into stable housing. This team is growing and in ways necessary to effectively address such a multidimensional issue as homelessness. I look forward to see what this growing team will accomplish, and I am certain it can be something that we are proud of. And now I'd like to welcome the head of our team, Mayor Brandon Johnson. <laughs> Thank you so much, Commissioner Castaneda, the new commissioner, um, as she has been uh, noted. I thought she was going to introduce me as the new mayor of the city of Chicago, but <laughs> I guess after 10 months, I guess y'all just used to me. So thank you. Um, it really is an exciting day uh, today in Chicago. But I, I do want to especially thank Holston Real Estate Development Team. Um, you know, these two developers, uh, Peter and Jackie, um, what a weekend. Uh, to have two incredible individuals to show up um, to fulfill the promise and the hope and really the miracle of dignity. Um, when you are serving the least of these, you are serving unto thee. I don't mean to get too preachy today, but I want to thank Jesus' two disciples. <laughs> Come on, y'all, Jackie and Peter. <laughs> it's, it's really the history of this city is, is remarkable, but the future is bright. Let me also just acknowledge our CEO, Tracy Scott. Um, thank you for your leadership. Um, I'm grateful that our city council's housing committee chairperson is here. Uh, you all show some love for uh, Alderman Byron Cicho Lopez. <laughs> and our DFSS managing uh, deputy commissioner is also here. Uh, Mara McCauley, thank you for being here. And then I know we give a special shout out to Ms. Shelley of HUD. Thank you all for your leadership. Let's listen, this, yes, please go ahead, you can clap. I'm really excited to celebrate the redevelopment of Lawson House with you all today. Um, some of you may know that my early professional career, I started off at the YMCA and working for the YMCA of Chicago, you know, this place and other YMCAs uh, played an incredible role in providing support for families and individuals who were um, experiencing a, a level of vulnerability uh, that I would hope that no one has to experience. Um, this is an historic moment, though, um, because, you know, the apartments um, in this historic Art Deco building um, has been modernized, it has empowered tenants, but it also is putting people in a position to build brighter futures for themselves and to ultimately thrive in this great city. As part of the renovations, this building now includes uh, retail space, apartment amenities, on-site supportive services for its tenants. This is a big deal. And of course, the new rooftop terrace uh, that will be used for program space and local so social service organizations. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna be available for fundraisers, but we'll get to that later. <laughs> but for the next 50 years, this building will preserve um, over 400 units of affordable housing for Chicago residents. We're talking about a generational investment here. For the next 50 years plus, families will find security here in Lawson House. 
This was made possible because of the City Department of Housing, Chicago Low Income Housing Trust Fund, Chicago Housing Authority, of course, the Illinois Housing Development Authority. I'm grateful for this collaboration and the leadership that went into pres to the pre preservation of this building uh, that was once just a large single um, room occupancy building in the city. And SROs, of course, in this way this building is situated, um, has been born out of the 19th century when immigrants from all over the nation and the globe flocked to the city for a better life. That's why I think it's just also so remarkable that we are able to preserve um, this place. Because those of us who are in Chicago and those who wish to call Chicago their home one day, to know that we have this investment, it's a continuation of the deep and profound history that this city has to people all over the world. Doesn't it feel good to be part of a world-class city? It does. I mean, it's, it's our strength, it's our diversity that makes us a remarkable city. And my administration is deeply committed to resolving um, the city's housing crisis and addressing homelessness in Chicago. And no matter what the challenge is, no matter what we face, my commitment to ending homelessness um, will not be deterred. Now, there are those that refer to my advocacy and my leadership as defiant. I had a chance to exchange, and I hope this is okay, Jackie. When, when you grow up in a household with, with one bathroom and, and barely enough to make ends meet, if you've never been vulnerable and never have been vulnerable at, to homelessness, maybe you won't understand why we are as commitment and as defiant as we are to end homelessness. Especially when you have 68,000 Chicagoans who are without homes, and 17,000 children in our Chicago public schools, of which one in four black children are likely to experience homelessness over the course of their time as a student. And 70% of those who are on house are black people. So if my advocacy is defiant, what does that say about the systems who wish to keep people without dignity and unhoused? I call it wicked. And so that's why we are demonstrating in the first 10 months of my, of my administration that we are committed to ending homelessness. And so one of the first announcements that I made was our selection by the White House to participate in the All Inside Initiative and we are just one of six cities in the entire country competitively selected to receive dedicated federal support that will accelerate our efforts to prevent and end homelessness. In October, we passed my administration's first budget, which allocated significant resources towards mental health resources. That includes the reopening of two mental health clinics that were closed by two administrations ago. Yes, we are defiant. And we're doubling down on our non-police response to mental health crises by expanding our ability to actually show up to mental health crises without a police response. And so my administration has taken a holistic and a layered approach because we know that addressing the homelessness crisis in this city also means addressing the mental health crises that affects many of, of our people. I had an older brother who had untreated trauma and died addicted and unhoused. And so pardon me for wanting to be a bridge. In March, I introduced an ordinance to issue a $1.25 billion bond financed at no additional cost to taxpayers so that $600 million can go into affordable housing, another 600 into economic development. We're building a better, stronger, safer Chicago and we're investing in people. And so that's why today I'm thrilled to announce yet another huge step forward to the mission to prevent and end homelessness in Chicago. It's my great honor, of course, to introduce um, to everyone uh, the city's first ever chief homelessness officer, Cindy Soto. I'm just about done. She's smiling now, but I'm about to read her job description <laughs> and see how she feels after, after this. <laughs> but she's joining us from, she has an incredible background, Chicago Community Trust, where she shepherded efforts to get resources into the hands of underserved communities, particularly those experiencing homelessness and those 
who were housing insecure. And prior to that, as the former managing deputy commissioner at the Department of Housing and advisor at our Office of Equity and Racial Justice, Cindy has demonstrated an incredible amount of leadership centering her work around racial equality um, and making sure that the outcomes of programs reach those who are most impacted. She served as co-chair of the housing subcommittee in my transition team, and of course, will continue to support my administration implementing the vision and recommendations put forward uh, by that team. As chief homelessness officer, Cindy will be responsible for addressing the complexities of homelessness and housing insecurity in Chicago, including leading the development of a five-year plan that will guide the city's investments and activities through 2029. She will foster greater coordination among city departments with stakeholders across the city to provide leadership and partnership for the work that's ahead. Our city leaders and their staff design uh, will manage programs every day, ultimately to prevent and to respond to homelessness. So I can go on and on, but I don't, I want to make sure she starts, because her first day, technically not until next week. So <laughs> I'm going to read the rest of this job description next Tuesday. <laughs> uh, you know, but, but seriously, the, the Department of Housing, Department of Family and Support Services, and, um, and all of our sister agencies will ultimately come together to build a better, stronger, safer Chicago. And we do that by supporting those who are vulnerable and those who are experiencing um, housing insecurity. And so with that, we have a commitment um, that rapid rehousing um, will be a part of our effort and making sure that our residents who are experiencing homelessness have access to long-term, sustainable, independent housing. I'm so grateful that between the Park District, street, Streets and Sanitation, our Chicago Public Schools, all of these, the Chicago Department of Public Health, CTA, all of these entities play a part in building a better, stronger, safer Chicago. And our new CHO um, will lead what I've constantly spoken of, and that is the full force of government. This is truly an exciting day for the city of Chicago, and I want to exp express my sincere gratitude to Cindy uh, for stepping into this role and taking on such a critical responsibility. But I also want to thank the Chicago funders uh, together to end homelessness for their partnership, for making it possible to create this first ever position, chief homelessness officer position. And finally, again, I do want to thank our developers, Peter and Jackie, as well as all of our city leaders who have made a commitment to providing, providing housing opportunities for the people of Chicago. And I'm proud of the progress that we're going to continue to make together. And so with that, please, you all, make her feel really good, better than I felt on my first day, <laughs> to the new Chief Homelessness Officer, Cindy Soto. Thank you. Hello. Now you have to clap for yourselves because we're going to do this together. This is not just a one person experience. We're going to be doing this together. Um, thank you, Mayor, for the kind welcome. To my beloved city of Chicago, it is an honor to be standing here today as your first chief homelessness officer. <laughs> Chicago joins a small group of cities that have taken a bold step of creating a dedicated position that ensures every resident has access to safe, stable, and affordable housing. I am humbled by the opportunity to lead this work, and I am ready to dream big. As a lifelong Chicagoan who has experienced housing insecurity, I understand firsthand the challenges zero to low income individuals face in overcoming systemic barriers. Furthermore, as someone who sought stable housing at the age of 18 to escape violence, I also know that housing needs are complex. Fueled by a profound passion for social justice, I am determined to create innovative pathways that optimize existing programs and services while also launching new initiatives to address homelessness. The plans developed by my office will prioritize addressing the harms of systemic racism and uplifting marginalized communities. Joining existing efforts to mobilize the full force of government, I will work to create resilient communities that are abundant in resources for people facing homelessness. My immediate priorities involve working closely with my city colleagues to support the One System Initiative introduced by the state of Illinois. This initiative aims to establish a coordinated crisis response system for housing instability 
Additionally, I will lead, as the mayor noted, the development of a five-year comprehensive plan with clear strategies that get to the root causes of homelessness. In addressing the multifaceted factors contributing to homelessness, a comprehensive approach is essential. I am dedicated to fostering greater collaboration to tackle this pressing challenge. A crucial action step will also include consistently convening the city's interagency task force to concretize a shared set of goals and objectives. Implementing this collaborative approach will enable our city to achieve innovative solutions and effectively leveraging more resources. It is my sincere desire that every resident takes pride in residing in a city that is committed to housing justice. My ask to each of you is simple. Share your ideas and hold me accountable. It is an immense honor to undertake this vital role on your behalf and gaining and keeping your trust are important to me. Now, I have the pleasure of welcoming Andy Muentes to the podium. Andy is a resident of Lawson House Andy shared with me his journey from spending a year feel, uh, being homeless at Pacific Garden Mission to finding an apartment that he is proud to call home. With a background in computers, Andy is an independent contractor in the delivery service industry. Andy. <laughs> we are honored to have you here today to share your inspiring story with us. Welcome and thank you for being part of this moment. Thank you everyone. Well, good morning. Good morning. Um, as we said, my name is Andy Montez. I've been a resident here since 2019. Um, again, you know, doing a technology consultant work, and I'm also working on getting a degree now that I'm stable again. Um, <laughs> the my Chicago story started in 2018 when I moved out here to join a girlfriend that lived out here, which, and unfortunately that didn't work out. Mm, found, <laughs> um, found myself homeless and all of my family's out east. So I knew that I could go into a police station and um, I could get help there, so that's what I ended up doing. The, um, the desk sergeant let me use the phone to uh, call 311. They had a, a service van come and pick me up and took me to Pacific Garden Mission that night. Um, once I got there, I met with the intake specialist, and the way they do it there, uh, there's three meals a day. Um, at 8 p.m., they start lining people up, first come, first serve for, the, for beds. They have about 60 bunks per room, and uh, there were at least three rooms full of beds. So there were a lot of people there. I know it was a shelter, so I wasn't expecting it to be comfortable, but I was just happy to be off the street. Now, I was there for a year while doing random daily jobs until I got hit by a car and suffered some major injuries. Um, going through that, they, uh, PGM let me stay there. Um, they helped me get connected with the Matthew House um, drop-in center down on Indiana where I was met up with a case manager who signed me up for, for the CHA waiting list. After about two months, um, I was relieved to finally have housing because they picked my name um, to come here. Now, I had never heard about the building before, so I didn't know anything about it, but I was excited to get out of the shelter and get into a room, even, in, even the SRO. Um, once I got in here, it was nice to you know, have my own place again. But there, I mean, some things were a little rough. Uh, sharing, hall, you know, communal bathrooms and showers with the other residents was a little rough because, you know, not everybody's clean. <laughs> and also, we were dealing with COVID at the time, so that didn't, you know, help at all. Um, in 2021, I, as part of the relocation, I was sent up to the Lakeview YMCA and uh, I just got back here in January of this year. So, and I, I was really looking forward to coming back here to see all, you know, everything that's been done, um, all the things that we're going to have available. And I didn't know what to expect, but once I got here and saw what we had, I mean, it, it's, there's no way to put it other than fantastic. Um, I, I've been 
in the uh, HHCD program since before the renovation, because I was here for two years, then uh, having you know social services on site is very convenient and it's reassuring to know that if we need it, there's people there that we can talk to. So I mean, that, that helps. I, I love this area. I enjoy the city life. I'm from New York City originally, so you know it's not a big deal for me to be out here. <laughs> um, um, I'm, I'm planning on you know hitting all the attractions now that I'm back down here, and there's still um, there's still stuff that they're working on on the building. But I mean, like I said, it's it's a great experience. So thank you. Thank you, Andy. Um, I love hearing your story. Um, the, the tough times, <clears throat> the recovery times, um, that's what this property is about. Yes, it's a beautiful building. Yes, everything is brand new. Um, yes, we had an incredible uh, construction company in Walsh. Yes. Um, Yes, we have uh, an incredible social service affiliate, uh, Holston Human Capital Development, who managed the uh, relocation. Um, when I told my better half, Jackie, who runs HHCD, that I, I would like her to do the relocation, she asked me, well, how many people? And uh, I think it was like almost 400. And she, I don't think she talked to me for a, a day, but that is a massive relocation. And um, Jackie, uh, with Jackie's assistance, we, we met with folks from HUD to talk about the Uniform Relocation uh, Act, and they sort of shook their head. Are you kidding me, 400 people? For how long? Um, and, and then th uh, throw in COVID. COVID was, was roaring then. And so they set up uh, um, in a room like this, not quite as big, uh, and interviewed every single one of those 380 residents um, going through um, choices of where they could live, all the, the paperwork, the notices, and everything. And the funny thing was, we, um, we actually had a couple deals lined up with some vacant hotels. Uh, you know, hotels were getting vacant during COVID. Uh, and I think we, we, we worked out $50 a night per person was going to be for 30 months. And um, I, I thought they would appreciate that. Um, but um, the vaccine was coming out, and they all backed out. Said, well, with the vaccine, you know, we can get two, three, four hundred dollars a night. Why, sh why should we take 50? So there we are with no place to go. Um, so we, um, we did find 11 locations uh, on, on, uh, throughout the city to put these 380 folks. Um, and then we needed to manage them uh, for that period of time, two years of construction, for them to then uh, relocate back. So um, I don't think we'll ever do a relocation like that again. But, uh, <laughs> but anyway, thank you, Jackie, and your, your human capital team for doing that. <clears throat> I'd, I'd like to, th to, to thank all the funders, um, those that, that spoke, and there's others. Um, Corporation for uh, Supportive Housing, um, LISC, and, um, and another one that um, I don't, I'm not sure if he's here or not, Jim Lechinger. Um, when you do a, a, a market rate building in, in the city area, um, there's a thing called the Affordable Requirements Ordinance. And um, we were at a, um, a community meeting uh, where uh, Jim was uh, talking about his plans for the one Chicago development across the street here. And, um, and Jackie um, walked right up to him on the podium after the, he finished his remarks and said, you don't know me, but I want your ARO. <laughs> and he's, he's like, what, what? And so Jackie um, built a relationship with Jim and, and with, the, with the assistance of the Department of Housing, uh, we were able to uh, glom on to over $6 million of, of his ARO 
and then went right into here as one of our um, pieces of financing. So that, that works. Uh, uh, and um, I just want to thank all 150 employees and staff people of, of Holston Management, Holston Development, and Holston Human Capital. Um, darn near every one of us had a lot to do with this. And um, this is hard work. This is hard work. Um, this is heart, heart's work. If, you're, if your heart's not in it, because by God, it's hard. It's hard. And, and if you're, you're committed to this, like many of you are, um, then you, you work at it day after day, week after week, month after month. And in the case of projects this large, it can easily go a decade. And that's, that's a lot of work. And I want to thank all of you that participated in, in this. Walsh Construction doing a phenomenal job. Um, uh, bless their hearts, they ate up all our contingency. <laughs> but uh, but we, were, we were warned, we were warned. Um, um, a rehab is normally 10% contingency. Uh, a gentleman in, in um, DOH Construction, Wade Holland, said, you better push it to 12 and a half, and it's all going to go. And so thank you, Wade. But <laughs> anyway, um, thank you all for being here. We love what we do. Um, we're, we're, the residents are, um, almost all the relocated residents are back in here. Uh, now we're taking residents off of certain wait lists. Um, we have a lot of pieces of financing that favors uh, people, uh, different uh, income, income areas and um, st uh, state housing lists and CHA lists and, and we have some of our own wait lists. Um, but um, here's 400, over 400 units that will help the city's uh, issue with homelessness. And um, Cindy and I have known each other for a while um, and so um, take care, Cindy. You're, you have a, a, a massive job, but we just pulled 400 units <laughs> off of your list. <laughs> so you only, got, you only got a million to go. So, so, so thank, thank you all so much for your support. Um, it, it's just incredible to, to pull it all together. And um, we are now going to have a ribbon cutting uh, behind me, and then we'll take a, a few questions. Well, thank you very much.
So we have a, 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 a bit of a um, few minutes for questions and answers. Um, yes. Could you could you state your name so everybody knows who you are? We we know who we you know are. who you are. <laughs> no, the building is actually for men and women. The rooms are for single occupancy, but they are full stated rooms with bathrooms that are private, kitchens that are full, beds, table with chairs, dressers. Um, so it's a wonderful, wonderful upgrade from what it was, but it's men and women, and it's integrated on all the floors. Okay, um, hi, my question's for the mayor. Um, okay. <laughs> I thought the first question was going to be for Andy if he was still single. <laughs> hey. Sorry. I got you, Andy. <laughs> Trying to help the brother out here. And listen, let me just say, Andy, it may not have worked out, but you still have a great love story here in Chicago. All right? Do you have a question around homelessness first? Is that is okay? I mean, just I, I got you, but can we just do some untopic questions first? And I, I'm happy to respond to that. But if there's some people, I would rather. This is a big deal for Chicago, and I don't mean any disrespect. This is a crisis. I'm happy to answer that question. But can we just focus on the untopic questions first? Yes. Well, all right. Let's do the on topic first. How about that? Okay. Um, yeah, the progressives uh, caucus struck a more conciliatory tone about Greek Chicago homes uh, loss and said it stemmed from distrust in city government and that leaders can and must do better to earn and maintain constituent trust. Um, I know a year ago during a mayoral debate, you said that restoring trust in city government was a top priority for you. Um, could maybe you and Cindy talk about this as it relates to Greek Chicago home, whether it was a lack of trust in city government? Well, I think I don't know if it's worth speculating why voters decided to vote the way they did. You know, look, I'll leave that to pundits. What I said is that voter turnout was extremely low, and it's incumbent upon all of us um, to engage the electorate on a variety of issues. You know, as far as the issue that's at hand, um, if people are con committed to a conciliatory approach, then they have to be committed to projects like the one that we're celebrating today that homelessness and the fight to end homelessness um, has to be an effort that everybody um, engages in. And as I've said repeatedly, I'm interested in working with anyone and everyone who is committed to preventing any homelessness. Anything short of that, then I, I, don't, I don't know what purpose um, they may have, but it's pretty clear that there's a tremendous need. So we're gonna to continue to bring people together and collaborate around preventing and ending homelessness, and I'm grateful um, that we're off to uh, a very, very great start for Cindy Soto. Thank you. Thank you. Uh. Is this for me as well? This for you. Okay, okay. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Peter. I, no, no. I was an invited guest today. <laughs> you can handle as many as you want. <laughs> you know, Chicago home, uh, yeah. there was a lot of pushback from real estate and mega developers and labor industry and the uh, we were talking about working with anybody and everybody just now to try to work on this issue. Um, how do you plan to bring that block to the table to try to address this issue? Yeah, the, thank you for the question. The table is available. I mean, it's not an exclusive table. That's the difference. The table is actually bigger. The, the real question is, why did it take so long for people to pay attention to those who were most impacted? Those are the ones who have been out from the table. Can I just offer a quick little historical context? The first person to push this was in 1996. It was Cook County Board President John Strozier. 1996. And the same entities and agencies that fought against us today hammered the board president in 1996, beat it before he even was able to make it to the floor the city of, of, of the county board to even debate it. And then here's the thing, not only did they beat him in public, just berated him in public for even having the temerity to suggest 
um, a shift. They went to Springfield and said that no one can ever bring this up less by ballot referendum. Those forces have been fighting against this well before I was even out of high school. It's not new. So they're just adjusting to a table that is bigger than what they have been accustomed to. I'm not the first, let me just name it, okay? I am not the first black man executive to push for revenue to address this crisis. The attempt was to destroy board president John Strozier in 1996, and those same forces do not want to see us address this issue in 2024. So if anybody is defiant, it's them. <laughs> the people of Chicago has been consistent. We have to ask the question is, why are they so mad? Because we want to address homelessness. Why does that offend them? Now, I'm not saying you have to ask that. That's just more maybe rhetorical. I'm just saying. <laughs> but that's, that's, that's my response. Thank you. Any other on-topic questions from reporters? You have an on-topic I'll push your name and where are you from? I'm Caitlin Watson, I'm from Okay. Um, the move this weekend, uh, Well, this is the work that's in, thank you for that question. This is the work of our chief homelessness officer. Uh, we, don't, we don't have, Chicago's never had a comprehensive um, homelessness uh, uh, entity or formation. And so, you know, look, we don't want anyone to be without, without a home, even those who are seeking temporary shelter, who are fleeing um, their countries because of, you know, foreign policy that has caused disruption in those respective spaces. So, you know, look, this is an ongoing development. Um, we, have, we have gone from police districts where people, remember when migrants were sleeping on floors in police districts? Remember that? We fixed that. Remember when they were in airports? We fixed that. We found temporary shelter in parks, and I'm grateful to the parks as well as the police department that handled this, 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 this crisis. And so now we're shifting into something that we believe ultimately has to be a model for the rest of the country. Um, that's an ongoing work, and that's part of the five-year plan that is gonna be developed. And uh, we're looking forward to the collaborative approach like what we are seeing today to help us address long-term sustainability for anyone who is seeking shelter in this city. Uh, Leah? Good morning. Yes. Uh, on topic, you mentioned that people may not understand what it feels like to um, be in an unstable living situation unless they have been. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about the livability in this dense area Well, the, the unique thing about the Lawson House, this is not brand, the, the, the facility has been renovated, but individuals uh, uh, using this space as shelter or for housing, uh, that has been in place for, for, for almost a century now. You know, so it's not like people in this ward are going to wake up and to discover something super brand new. What they are going to experience is that the people who are here are going to be able to live here with more dignity and have more support services, I would argue that the situation just got better. First of all, we should do all press conferences like this. You all are great. <laughs> I mean, there's support services on, look, Andy told you it's better. He told you. Like his life has been, he, this is what he really said. He said, Chicago is the greatest city in the world, and forget you, New York. <laughs> I mean, it, it, look, it's brought joy to his life. He's going back to school. I mean, you can see it on his face. And he's not by himself, right? There are 400, over 400 more uh, people who are experiencing that type of joy. And, you know, that's ultimately what provides a better, stronger, safer Chicago is will you actually invest in people's future? And that's why we have the moment that we have now, because we're committed to doing that. How are we uh, doing, cousin? Sean, you want one? Sean Lewis? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Yeah. Sean's like that, that person in my classroom who wasn't quite paying attention. I saw him <laughs> looking at his notes real quick. Go ahead, Sean. No, I, was taking, I was taking notes. 
Do you take notes? All right, that's right. All right. <laughs> Are we done with on topic? Any any other on topic? No, I can do on topic. All right, go on please, topic. Please, thank you. Talk about what it's like to have this go. I mean, the number of people in house here smaller than it was a couple of years ago, but the amenities are different. Talk about what that does. Any of you want to yeah, I, I would. I would. Yeah, sure. please. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Phew. <laughs> <laughs> Take a break. Thank you. <laughs> um, what, what does that do when you don't have to share facilities? <clears throat> Yeah, it's called it's called dignity of living, and um, I mean I you know I went to college uh, 50 years ago I you know and and uh, I remember freshman dorm, and it was just a bunch of rooms uh, they it was a, a guy's dorm, and you go in uh, and and take a shower, and some somebody else comes in and flushes all the toilets, and then the water's scalding. Okay, so um, we know those tricks. But um, <clears throat> it's, it's dignity. I mean, some people um, don't feel comfortable being naked in a, in a public shower. And so you got your own now. Um, there was no, no cooking facilities. There was a sink to brush your teeth in each room, but there were no cooking facilities. And uh, when the Y was done, uh, and you'll see some pictures around here uh, that show that, when the Y was done in the 30s, and so you're looking at 30s and 40s and 50s, uh, they had a cafeteria downstairs, so they did have they did have a place to go to eat, um, but um, it just it just feels better when you have more control over your life, and having control over your life helps your mental health, and and so um, having your own bathroom and and shower and by the way it happens to be roll in shower for people with physical disabilities. Um, having your, you know, your, your own kitchen um, so that you can, you know, take cooking lessons from human capital. Um, uh, human capital is going to put on, uh, you know, they're going to bring in uh, Bobby Flay or one of these people. <laughs> no, I don't. But, um, but um, to, just, to just have more control over your life. And that, that's a big uh, help with mental health, and that's what this is all about. All right. Thank you all so much. Appreciate it. Thank you.